the term science diplomacy is relatively new. In fact, it's been used for less than a decade. However, advances in science have long relied on international flows of people, goods, and ideas. Similarly, diplomatic relations between peoples, city-states, and nations have always been linked in some way to science and technology, including using science as a tool for diplomacy and peace building. Polynesian islanders developed complex navigational systems that allow them to establish massive networks of island states. When eight scholars were persecuted by the Roman Emperor Justinian, they were welcome in Persia for their scientific contributions to natural science and astronomy. The Silk Road, stretching from Asia to Europe, facilitated the exchange of goods, including technologies, such as the Chinese papermaking system. In Spain, where I'm from, a shared goal of intellectual expansion and scientific knowledge during the Middle Ages overcame religious differences among Muslims, Christians, and Jews. The Royal Society in London, one of the oldest science academies in the world, had its very own foreign secretary. His role was to maintain regular correspondence with scientists overseas so the Society's fellows could remain up to date with the latest ideas and research findings. What's interesting about this is that the position was created in 1723. That's nearly 60 years before the British government appointed its own foreign minister. Fast forward to the American Revolution in the 1770s. Commanders of the opposing forces allowed US and British scientists to move back and forth across battle lines. And Benjamin Franklin, a founding father of the United States, was able to leverage this reputation and credibility as a scientist to help solicit support for the Americans when he was the ambassador to France. These are only a few examples of the many ways that diplomacy and science have intertwined over time. Since World War II and the devastating use of the atomic bomb, science diplomacy has come more and more to the forefront of both national and international stages. Science and technology played a critical role not only in the outcome of World War II, but in the subsequent competition between the superpowers during the Cold War. In 1955, Bertrand Russell and Albert Einstein published a manifesto calling on scientists of all political persuasions to address the threat posed by the advent of nuclear weapons. In the 1970s, the United States and the Soviet Union had already been in a state of tension for over two decades. Yet, on July 17, 1975, the U.S. spacecraft Apollo docked with its Russian counterpart, Soyuz, in orbit. The commanders of the ship shook hands and the crew ate together, spoke each other's language, and performed scientific experiments side by side. This handshake in space didn't resolve tensions between the two powers of the Cold War. They would still go on to boycott one another's Olympic Games, and the Cold War didn't officially end for another 16 years. But it was an important symbol of detente and demonstrated that scientific collaboration was still possible between powers in conflict. We should note that we are retroactively labeling these historical events as science diplomacy. But recognizing the explicit linkage between science and diplomacy allows us to strategically harness the power of science to address both national and global challenges. What's different now? Why is it so important to recognize and consider science diplomacy explicitly as a crucial element of international relations in the 21st century.